Hello everybody, Bryos here and today we are yet again looking at another clan heavy mech. This time we have the very beautiful, very wide armed Omni mech known as the Ebon Jaguar, the 65 ton beauty and this particular variant here is the Ebon Jaguar Prime. But variant really doesn't matter so much in Omni mechs and that's because you can swap the Omni ports around and that's the strength of the Omni mechs. They have some flaws but let's not talk about them. So good thing about the Ebon Jaguar, even though it's 65 tons, you can pack a lot of port tonnage and it's really vicious on the battlefield, kind of a glass cannon because of the lack of structure quality and being so wide convergence is an issue and if you're going to corner pick this arm stick out quite a bit but the good thing is that it has high mounts which are also a flaw easy to pick out and yeah it's pretty popular in fact this is a laser vomit to build as you can see from all the weapons mounted on it not the most rare this used to be pretty popular and with the decline of laser vomit due to the rise of darker this build's pre-april patch used to get spanked a lot but with the rise of laser vomit due to the quadrant patch coming in in april this is a quadrant born in inner sphere by the way so kind of well, matching uh the clan laser vomit is back so it is quite fun to take out and play again because not only can you have fun it also performs pretty darn well on the battlefield so let's get down to the bill so this is a simple laser vomit bill two large pulses in the left torso and five ER medium lasers spread out among the mech itself and just take note for the left torso with its three energy hard points is the Ebon Jaguar A left torso uh, if you put the ER medium laser in first the two large lasers which come in later will go to the top ER medium laser going in first takes up the low slot and the two high mounts are the, ER, are the large pulse lasers and it's good because when you heal him you can shoot this as long as you can see the enemy these two lasers will be able to hit but do take note it does stick out a bit so the enemy will be targeting this if they are of any reputable skill level and because it's an omni mech i'm using the Ebon Jaguar prime chases and the B right arm the D left or rather the D right torso and the A left torso. The arm doesn't really matter because there's no weapons on it. And this build actually has 24, yes, a staggering 24 double heat things. So it can do lots of alphas or rather a respectable amount of alphas. And heat dissipation is fantastic on this build. With a T-Com Mark 1 in the left torso, it increases the range of this. So you have, you have quite a bit of standoff distance and you'll see that in the gameplay. You're able to do quite a bit of damage before you close in for the kill. But being a laser vomit build, it's still pretty darn hot. And that will affect the skills you're going to put into it. And talking about skills, let's get down into the skill tree. So for firepower tree, it's 41 SPs. The main nodes I want are the laser duration nodes, and that's because of the ER medium lasers. Shorter duration of 10% allows the damage to be packed in in a shorter duration, and it allows you to redeploy faster. And being a laser vomit build, you want to get all the heat nodes, all the heat gen nodes specifically, and with this configuration, I have a heat reduction of 8.4%. Range boost of 12% is incidental. That means I didn't really plan for it, but it's pretty nice. Boosting the ER medium laser range to quite a far distance, especially with the T-Com put in. Almost 500 meters optimal, I think. Uh, cooldown of 6.6% allows you to fire a bit faster. And that's good because this is a DPS build. You want to deal as much damage as you can in a short time and run away because you can't really take that much damage in return. Clan Max generally are glass cannons, so you don't want to brawl with the Inner Sphere Max. And talking about damage, I've got 9 SPs in survivability, mainly on the left side. Not that much, but just to boost its survivability a bit. 6.8% armor bonus, and yep, that's it. So for mobility, 14 SPs on the right side. This right side is more for XL, D cell, and turn. I've got one node of speed tweak, so it moves at 82.2, just a bit faster than, well, normal. Clan Max are pretty fast, so it's still really decent. And with all the other bonuses, I have an XL, D cell, and turn rate bonus of 10.5, 14%, and 24% respectively. 20 SPs in operations for 5 nodes of cool run, that's 10% heat dissipation. 5 nodes of heat containment, that's 15% heat capacity increase, pretty much my standard. So all the heat gen nodes from the firepower tree and the heat dissipation cool run nodes from operations are pretty much necessary for any laser vomit to build or any build that runs hot. This is a zero SP sensor tree build because um, I, yeah, I know you're going to get learned because no radar deprivation but I believe in the power of friends ECM or hard cover and the savings here you can put elsewhere. And finally for auxiliary, uh, with the nerf to the strikes I'm going to pack a few less strikes, just one strike and with the rest I'm going to put 
the seven SPs into getting cool shot cooldown 25% reduction and two enhanced cool shots. So you can fire one cool shot and a second cool shot a bit faster. Yet again, really important for a laser vomit build. So if you're looking for a laser vomit build skill tree, this skill tree is pretty much my standard. Variants do exist because it depends on your play style. So that's it. That's the really beautiful Ebon Jaguar and it looks really gorgeous with Warthog mouth and the eyes. You can swap all sorts of eyes and yeah, it looks beautiful and it's really vicious and it does perform post April patch. So anyway, let's get down to the battlefield with this glass cannon and I'll show you that it's fun, vicious, but not overpowered. So let's go. So here we are on Hibernal Rift for the very first match. It's a pretty popular map and as usual, the pretty popular strategy is to rush to the center and Chai Lan's being 300 turners and me uh, is a bit slow. We're stuck in the corner here and I'm actually keeping them company. One thing about this build, it has range so there's no need to rush forward. I can take pop shots like that. Uh, yeah, the 100 turners are really slow so uh, I think they're going to be left behind and killed. So I'm going to keep them company. Charlie tree low. There are going to be a few there. Yeah, they're not making good speed. A light has already spotted them. I'm actually trying to move up to join the main force in the center. Uh, but I think I'd rather keep the assaults company. Starting with three assaults down is really a bad idea sometimes. So using the range of this build to do a bit of damage to those targets far away. Kind of torn between rushing to the center there or staying to support the assaults. So staying in the middle right now as I see how the game develops. There's the Can we support our assaults? Bravo, Lance in Charlie 2, Charlie 3. There's the Annihilator and another assault. Uh, lights have already reached their rear in Charlie 2. There's a flea in Charlie 2. I call it out but team is not coming back. Using the range of this build, like I said, to do some damage to that Hellbringer. And other mechs that expose themselves. Always keeping the Annihilator in my sights. We need a Light Hunter in Charlie 3. Yeah, they're again calling for help to support us, the Charlie Lance. Being harassed by, yeah, 3 or 4 lights, Charlie 2. To support Charlie Lance against all the incoming lights. Coming to support. Alright, decided to support this Kodak, but a bit late. Taken out by a piranha, I think. There he goes, Juliet. Punish him with a bit of damage. But he has an Arctic Wolf friend. Putting some range between me and him because his Arctic Wolves are normally just uh, SRM vomit. So I've got a linebacker buddy, time to move in. True enough, it's an SRM vomit build with some lasers. Left torso is caught, Kilo. He's engaged with the linebacker, so managed to call his torsos. Finally, a few more mechs come in. Wolf is half, Kilo. Imagine if you push through the center. Can't push. They have to go back. Yeah, somebody talking about pushing the center and winning, but they didn't realize that they left three assaults behind. Yup. Shamok goes down. Left also blown off by the laser vomit of this build. Two, three, still close. Even though we've lost two assaults, I think. Ah, Flea takes a nice burn to the rear. Look at the number of lights that they have. Night Raven kills himself, the guy from Ichi. Trying to fight two lights, probably got Crist. Now I'm not in a good situation. Uh, me versus all these lights who can easily outmaneuver me. By the way, the mobility patch drops in me, so things will look up after that. Because currently, mobility is just too terrible. So one Piranha. Thank you. Calls my rear, but somebody takes him out. Acquired. Yet again, another light. The lights are winning the battle for the enemy team. 6 5 right now. Nova goes after him. Uh, I don't have jump jets, so I'm gonna find another way, I suppose. We can actually go up somewhere here. There's a nice slope. Hibernal Rift has multiple ways up, so don't always use the same route. There are many ways. So this is a nice position. This is actually one of the best spots for sniping in Delta Tree. Or rather Bravo Tree. As you can see you have lines to the main the center here and to the left. Opposite side of the dropship where the enemy tends to deploy. Yep, that spot there. 8-8, eight, eight, game is close. I'm still pretty fresh. 
eight nine eight ten oh dear team is crumbling so currently it's 2v4 one rifleman there hits my rear a bit if i take off his arm yeah they'll half his firepower look at the heat dissipation on this bill really nice cold map also but mainly just fantastic heat dissipation from the 24 double heat sinks so he goes down Sparky makes the call to get me because I'm the last one. 3v1. Gonna be tight. Imagine having to protect. Assaults. <laughs> yeah, distracted because suddenly they're pushing me. Two of them coming in. Moshi and this Hellbringer. Moshi in the Grand Dragon. Couldn't get a good shot. Grand Dragons are really tanky. There's still one mech elsewhere. Hellbringer is called. I take him out. Now it's 1v1 with Moshi. There's still a mech behind me. Oh, Moshi gets my left torso. I get Crist. Left torso blows off. Heat spikes. That's it. Game over. Close match. So that was a pretty fun match. Ultimately a loss, but it was close. If only the team didn't leave their assaults behind. And yeah, that would have helped us. So 1100 damage, a massive game for me. 3 kills, all solo, 4 KMDDs as I supported the assaults. But 6 for 1 max score, but still a loss. So let's move on to the next match. So the last match was massive for me, doing 1100 damage. But sadly it's a loss because, you know, soup Q being soup Q. But it does show how much damage this build can put out. But anyway, right now we are on the same map, Hibernal Rift. Doing the same thing, starting in Chile Lance yet again. Yet again, putting some damage out at longer ranges before I close in. Blew off a component. There's a sun spider stuck in the low ground here. I'm gonna work on him a bit. Echo left torso, sun spider. Charlie Trilo. So calling him out so the team can focus on him. Hopefully the Wolverine on my left moves in. Fell down a bit because I'm clumsy at times. Charlie Trilo, guys. So without jump jets, this build has to move a bit more. Yeah, I tried my best to go up, but yeah, just not possible. So team is pushing Charlie Lance, which is a pretty standard tactic right now. If you look, if you look at the mini map, but I found this usual ramp up, so I'm gonna go up and look down at the valley. This is a nice spot also. You got good lines into the Charlie Tree low ground, which everybody seems to drop down and love. Everybody hates this area, but everybody drops in. NASCAR, you know, rotator potato. So enemy is caught in that low ground area. Charlie Tree low, whole bunch surrounded by the team. Crab is caught, Sun Spider goes down, KMDD. Charlie tries to make a break for it, but I get the kill. So 4 nil. I think this match will turn better than the last match. So a bit of LB fire from there. Good thing is I have range, 600 meters is kind of optimal range, close to optimal for my large pulses. Want my era mediums do half damage. That assault, that Fafner's LBs are just going to spread all over. Not to worry, I can out-trade him. I don't mind taking damage if I do better damage. Delta 4 team, Delta 4. Fafner and a Nova Cat and a Catapult. All there. Yeah, but with so much support, it's time for me UAV to... Echo 3. It's time for me to move on. Reposition. So yet again, that Nova Cat who has the ER large lasers. Gonna try trade with him a bit. Focus on his left torso. Yep, blew it off. Wonderful pinpoint damage on this. So if you think you can win a trade like just this trade here, go ahead and do it. Sometimes I don't shield because enemy gets focused on taking out a component. And because I'm in a better position to trade, I can out trade him. Take his component instead. And yes, bravo. As they try to remedy what their horrible situation. They are gonna just YOLO forward. And for me, it's time to find the next enemy concentration, which is just at the dropship here. New target acquired. So 7 2, the game is more or less won. Just a matter of mop up. This team is better than the last team, as you can see. So, one Griffin trying to get the kill here. Target. Oh, <laughs> sneak the kill. Kill secured. New target acquired. So, yet again, Kilo, that Nova Cat. Yet again, I'm going to deal with him. Oh, tried to get a catapult, but he died. There it is. Missing a torso. Flea goes in for the kill. Five-year-old large laser Nova Cat. 
but weaponless now. And the flea gets him. So that's it, 11-2. Just one more to kill, not even caught this time. Team is more focused, more clinical in its execution of the enemy. And they didn't abandon Charlie Lance. And to be honest, Charlie Lance didn't just hang around at the rear. So last one is a fresh Annihilator, kinda surprising. Maybe a DC? Could be. Oh, headshot. Probably a DC. Poor guys. So this is a much better team performance compared to the previous one, even though I'm sure I didn't do as much damage. But let's take a look at it. I think I got 4 kills. No, it's 3 kills, 702 damage, 4 KMDDs, that's very decent. And uh, max score of 4 or 5, 7. Good output. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and the build. Um, explore your older builds because with the patches coming in like the May mobility patch, things can only get better. And encourage your friends to come back and join us in MechWarrior Online. Till then, I will see you guys on the battlefield. Ciao folks and have a good day.